Hello booktube, welcome to Revenant Reads, I'm Vin, and this is a fresh red kill. Okay, on uh, fresh red kill uh, videos, these are basically my versions of like uh, weekend reads or Friday reads, just kind of an update on some of the things I've been wa uh, reading, and I might also talk about some things that I've been watching, and give also an update about the, my podcast that I co-host the horror cast uh, but first things that I've been reading and especially finishing um, first I did finish uh, Hamilton the revolution I mentioned a past video this is really kind of a, a gift for my wife she's a huge fan of this play um, she is constantly <laughs> uh, playing the songs singing the songs her and my kids are singing the songs uh, so I hear these a lot although she always plays the first act and I I just like her switch up to the second act sometimes. Um, and really this was kind of for her, but I was I was curious enough. Um, I really didn't know much about um, Broadway productions, you know, how they were made. Uh, it's definitely not my wheelhouse. So I wanted to learn more about that and reading it. And I know that Ron Chernow also gives, uh, you know, um, it contributes to this, um, who, uh, who wrote the biography on Alexander Hamilton that this was based on or, you know, that inspired the play um and one of the things i really liked uh were all the the footnotes for um for the lyrics uh that um lin-manuel miranda uh who's now i think well, practically a household name um that he puts in to explain his thinking and uh how certain lyrics came about um and i found those fun uh that was probably one of my favorite parts about this whole thing um but i mean really this is you know, you're not. This is not a critical history of uh, of the musical. Um, it is praising of every person and every aspect in here. Uh, if there was ever an argument on the set, you'd never you'd never get the impression <laughs> uh, for reading this. Um, and it gets gets a little bit self-aggrandizing. I mean, it is kind of a glorified advertisement for the Broadway play, and I really kind of under, I understand that. It's a keepsake for the fans. Um, but, you know, when your own book starts, you know, referring to you as a genius and <laughs> in very glowing, glowing terms, it kind of uh, it kind of starts feeling like a geography. Uh, you know, it, and it, it is what it is. Um, one of the things I did like, there, there was a chapter about... Uh, under underprivileged um you know urban youth uh going to see see the play you know and the impact of seeing you know uh, non-white actors inside this these very colonial uh clothing that are always always you know associated with with white men um especially with white male you slaveholders uh the impact that had but also there's a teacher who talks about um being inspired to uh, incorporate rap battles into their class when they start doing debates. And uh, as a teacher, I thought that was actually kind of a cool idea. Um, you know, I, I live in a fairly, well, I should say I work in a fairly, uh, you know, a suburban um, setting in Connecticut. Uh, not a huge amount of diversity. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know how much my students would have a, a nice repertoire of rap to pull from, but I do like that idea. And I could see, you know, using that as an option at least um, for for debates for students. So I was thankful to get that idea. But uh, yeah, I mean, if you're a fan of the Broadway play, I'm sure this would be great for somebody. Although it does have like a $50 price tag. Um, I mentioned at one point that I got it, it was 50% off on Amazon that I had a bunch of points. I think I only paid maybe 10 bucks for this. Uh, but um, yeah, you know, I'm glad I read it. Um, I don't think I'll include it in my monthly wrap-up uh, that I'll do at the end of the month. I think I'm going to keep that for books that um, are either, either favorites or ones that I feel like I have more I would need to discuss and talk about. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll kind of leave out books that I was just kind of okay on. <laughs> Didn't have much to say. And that would be this. Um, so I'm glad I read it. going to give it to my wife. She's going to go through it and, uh, you know, put it somewhere on the shelf downstairs. It's over here. Um... The next thing that I read uh, that I really liked, um, and this is The Wanderer's Havamal, translated by Jackson Crawford, who has a wonderful, prolific YouTube channel. Um, he's, a, he's a scholar in Old Norse literature and language, and uh, he's always posting videos that are incredibly helpful. 
Um, and this is his version of the Havamal, uh, basically the, the wisdom of Odin, um, based on a uh, manuscript that was written in the 1200s, but most of this, this verse writing um, probably dates back to uh, the 900s, um, and much of it pre-Christian. Uh, but it's basically advice from the god Odin uh, to a young man, uh, or at least that's the way it seems sometimes. And it's just it's just a lot of practical advice, um, you know, about living in moderation and uh, you know being a good person, having a good reputation. Um, don't be a jerk to people. You know, be nice. Be polite to guests. Uh, be, be honest when you speak. Um, it's a lot of practical advice, but there's some really great stuff in here. And I just, I really liked going through this. Um, I'm actually not going to say a ton more about it right now because I think I might make a separate video on this. Uh, I don't plan on doing a lot of like book review videos on single books. I think more of like a book discussion video on certain books that I really would like to dive into more. Um, and this, this is one. So I do think that in the near future, I'll make a I'll make a video about this um, and you know open up further discussion. And another one that I think I'll make a video dedicated to more in depth is this one Musashi, uh, which I finally got through. Uh, this is almost a thousand pages. Um, believe it or not, this English translation is abridged. Uh, the original Japanese is incredibly long. Um, historical fiction, an epic of uh, Miyamoto Musashi. Uh, the uh, probably the most famous swordsman in Japanese history. And uh, I certainly, I really enjoyed this. Um, like I said, I have a lot to say about it, a lot to talk about it. I do think it's going to need its own, its own video. Um, it took me about two months to read. I think I began it in mid-December. It is now mid-February, so about two months. And I know that coming up in March, there are some of those who are doing the March of the Mammoths, where they're going to read a mammoth book over 800 pages and part of me wants to <laughs> um take part in that and the other half of me is just like you just did it uh i i need some shorter reads uh, to offset uh like you know this this was a nice quick read <laughs> that i got done in um you know two busy days i was still able to get through this uh and that's always nice sometimes rather than two months um so we'll see i haven't decided yet if i'm going to be doing march of the mammoths but uh if not, I feel like I just finished a major mammoth. So after reading Musashi, I was curious about some other uh, ancient <laughs> uh, Asian writings. Um, inside the novel, they do uh, quote uh, Sun Tzu, the uh, art of war, which I think is from like 5th century BCE China. Um, so... Uh, after I finished this, I went and grabbed a, or I looked up a digital copy of The Art of War, and I read through that, um, and good practical advice. Uh, a lot of it seemed to be common sense, um, but there were some really interesting insights, uh, like the way that they could read the dust patterns that they see, whether or not it's chariots or marching or foraging of the enemy. Um, nice insight into ancient battlefields um, and battle tactics and how they read the terrain and the kind of choices that they had and that they made. Um, so it inspired me to, to read that. And it was a very quick, uh, very quick document. Um, and also I listened to uh, Takwan Soho's The Unfettered Mind. Um, Takwan was a real, a real individual, uh, a Buddhist monk, I guess you can say, a uh, Zen monk. And he's a, he's a character in this novel. Um, but like I said, he's, he was a real person. Um, he wrote a very influential book called The Unfettered Mind, uh, which is basically um, Zen. He's taking Zen Buddhist philosophy and applying it to swordsmanship. So the book was directed towards the samurai. And it's not really a, a fighting manual or anything like that. It's about um, using swordsmanship to demonstrate certain Zen um, concepts. And it's, it's one that I think I'll discuss more in relation to this novel um, when I do the the book on this. Um, so I did finish those two. I don't have physical copies to show you. Like I said, uh, The Unfair of Mine I listened to, and uh, The Art of War I found a, a digital PDF copy of online. Um, I also picked up uh, this one here. 
uh, started reading it. Uh, quick takes. Uh, this is from the Movies and Popular Culture series from Rutgers University Press. Uh, these are basically like little primers um, on subjects. This was on monster cinema. Um, this is from uh, Barry Keith Grant, uh, who was a, a, a well-known name in a horror scholarship. And this is just a primer about horror films and monsters in them and the different forms that they take and kind of what they mean and how their reactions to uh, you know, different periods of time. And it goes through all sorts of things. It's a general survey. Um, and I've been enjoying it. Um, there is, you know, <laughs> there are times when you find inaccuracies um, that can kind of throw you off. Uh, like on page two, he refers to uh, one of the movies, um, Wes Craven's The Stuff, which... Wes Craven didn't make the stuff. That was Larry Cohen. Uh, later on, a couple pages down, he starts referring to it as a Larry Cohen film. But it's things like that that make a quick take take longer because they're like speed bumps. And you're like, am I remembering that wrong? You got to go look this stuff up. Um, he does that another time where he's discussing um, 1959's uh, The Tingler by William Castle. And he misdescribes the plot. Um, it's kind of a major plot point. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it, it, I, I understand that a lot of times these, these guys are, are writing from memory. Um, but, you know, even in short little works like this, it kind of throws me off a little bit when I'm reading. Uh, but I, I just, I just picked it up, uh, this morning and I'm already, you know, I'm halfway through. I'll probably finish it tomorrow. Um, but anyway, the, the, these are nice little primers, um, quick takes. Um, and that's it for reading this week uh on the horror movie discussion podcast that i co-host the horror cast we publish an episode um it, it's a at this point kind of a monthly episode that we do uh called rotten, rotten round table uh where we just kind of go around and we talk about the different horror films that we've been watching um sometimes they're older but a lot of times it's the newer releases so if you're interested in keeping up with 2021 horror films uh that's a good episode to check out, and I'll have a link for it inside the description. Um, also, if you are if you are a horror fan, you want to know my recommendations from last year. Um, again, you can always check out the podcast, but I will also link inside the description my my letterboxed uh, profile, and I will link my um, 2020 horror watches, horror movies that came out in 2020 that I watched last year, and there were about 130 of them, and I have them ranked from. Uh, favorite to definitely least favorite uh but it was a strong year um so if you are a horror fan you want to see some of the newer stuff and you know you're not sure what you should check out you know give the list a try um everybody has their own taste uh so you know can't guarantee <laughs> that my taste is going to match up with yours um i don't mind a little pretentious stuff sometimes and uh some super artsy um i'm, I'm very story driven I, I like good writing and good story inside uh inside horror films um you know it, the other stuff is kind of secondary to me sometimes um but anyway i'll leave that in the description as well all right so uh thank you everybody uh thanks for another you know, watching another episode of fresh red kills <laughs> whatever this thing is um and i'll talk to you next time